friends. So today we're going to be talking about some first-time ferret owner facts. And I'm sure many people that already have ferrets, they may not know everything on this list, but we're just going to cover a few things. Number one is that ferrets are obligate carnivores. This means they are only able to successfully digest meat and meat byproducts. They are only able to digest meat. And meat byproducts, of course. Now, by byproducts, that means anything that has to come from the animal, such as bones, tissues, muscles, etc. Feeding your ferrets fruits, veggies, or anything other than these, these items is going to cause bladder stones and insulinoma due to the high carb rate. And now, how can fruits and vegetables be bad for a ferret's health? Well, because their digestive systems aren't equipped to process large amounts of carbohydrates, and if we look at the carb content in some common people treats, you can see that it is significantly higher than the natural meat prey diet that ferrets have evolved to live on. Feeding your ferret a diet rich in carbs will cause shutting down of their pancreas, leading to insulinoma and painful bladder stones that we will discuss further later. So this here is the product that we use. It is Wysong Epigen 90 Digestive Support. Now, I also mix it with this grizzly salmon oil, which is really good for their coats. As you can see, ooh, crash, you're looking nice and handsome. You're looking nice and handsome, yes you are. He's so annoyed, you see that? Pro likes my cuddles, Pro and Milo like my cuddles. Anyways, now when you feed your ferrets, I do recommend keeping the food in their proximity 24 seven. They will maintain their diet and they won't overeat or they shouldn't overeat. Now I also recommend giving them a weekly egg because ferrets are actually not able to process hairballs and it's, it can, it's very easy for them to have an intestinal blockage. Two of the most common obstructions for ferrets are hairballs and bladder stones, although many household items can be a threat as well. This is why it is important to what we call ferret-proof your home. It's basically removing everything from the household that can be deadly to them or they can get stuck on. They're very curious and inquisitive, so it's very easy for them to get into things. 90% of the time, if their head can fit through it, they can fit through it. Another thing that I'll mention is that ferrets are not cage animals, but they are kept in cages. So I make that a point to say because I see many people that get ferrets and then two months pass and the ferret stays in the cage. Kind of like a decoration, like a fish. Fishes that you don't really need to interact with them every day. Now I would say ferrets require about four to eight hours of interaction a day. Now one thing that many people don't know is that ferrets learn by mimicking behaviors. These are very intelligent and very social creatures that thrive in what they call a business. And a business is just a group of ferrets. So in the wild, they will mimic the behaviors of their business to learn special hunting tactics and things like that. But as domestic animals and pets, they're going to learn from you. When disciplining your ferrets, keep in mind that the approach you decide to use will reflect in your ferret's future behavior. As you can see, a more assertive approach will result in a more aggressive and untrusting ferret, while a more passive approach will result in a more behaved and gentle ferret. Now, bathing your ferret too often will lead to severe dry skin problems, and this can lead to skin cracking that can cause bleeding, that can cause bleeding, or even fur loss. A great alternative to your chemical ridden, dye ridden ferret shampoos that have a ferret on them that didn't really get to ferrets and they don't like to know why they put it on for ferrets is an oatmeal bath. Now, that's very easy to do. And we're going to show you exactly how we do it. So, it has been a little over a year now since I've given my ferrets a bath because they tend to stay pretty clean, but today is the day and I'm going to show you the safest and healthiest way to get it done. Now the first step of doing an oatmeal bath is to get some oatmeal, obviously, and an old sock. Place about one cup into the sock. Just tie it up when you're finished and we're good to go. Now we start a lukewarm bath. Fill the tub approximately only two to three inches. Okay, you never want the water to be too high to where it forces your ferrets to swim or they struggle to keep their head above water. And then you place the sock into the tub and wait for the water to turn cloudy. Insert noodles into the pot slowly. Being careful not to get any of the oatmeal water into their eyes. Allow them to soak for no more than three to five minutes, which should be more than enough. Once we're finished, we're going to drain the tub and rinse off and make sure to dry with a microfiber towel or in this case, a microfiber bath mat. 
have this done as needed. So they don't need to be bathed like dogs, they don't get stinky, and they actually will smell more and have more of a musky scent if they're bathed more often. Now before you get your ferret and before you make that purchase because of that cute little face, make sure that you understand it's not the happiest thing and I don't like talking about it, but they do, they are prone to many diseases. This list is not meant to scare anyone, but to educate on some scary realities of owning ferrets. Before adopting any animal, but exotics especially, be sure to do plenty of research. I can tell you from my experience that taking care of ferrets and giving them an ideal living situation is not cheap. I don't care how many people say that it does not cost that much money or $500 to $600 will get you a ferret and everything that you need. That is not true, sadly. And setting somebody up this way, unprepared, may lead them to failure. If I were to sum up every single dime that I've spent on my ferrets thus far, and I've only had them for a little over a year, that would be probably easily over $4,000. This was because we battled two different two different cases of lymphoma with two rescue angels of ours, but this is still going to be around the 2000 range. Um, they need their vaccinations, they need different things that we'll get into soon. So please, please just keep this in mind when thinking of getting a ferret, that they are costly and they aren't the cheapest animal to keep. Milo. Some people say that they use Carefresh, and that's not that bad. I've never heard any problems of it. I have heard some people say that it can cause respiratory infections, but honestly, it is better than a lot of different alternatives that I've seen some people use. What we use, um, very obviously, is blankets. Many, many, many blankets. And I wash them once a week. Make sure that if you do use fleece blankets and you do wash them once a week to use a detergent that is free of dyes and free of essential oils, as these will poison ferret skin, and we don't want that. Now the reason we've decided to use fleece over the Carefresh or other bedding is they seem to be more clean and it seems to keep them out of pooping everywhere and getting a mess all over the floor and things of that nature. I also use fleece blankets because all around it is cheaper. And as our video comes to an end, I wanted to have a sort of summary checklist for anyone out there watching who wants to adopt ferrets and doesn't know where to begin. I made sure to cover, it, cover everything that we have and also notice that I put no Marshalls brands on this list. Absolutely none of their products are safe for ferrets to ingest or use and I recommend that you stay far away from this brand completely. Before we go, I would just love to introduce you guys a project that me and the Fur Babies have been working on to give back to our community. 10% of our profits every single month is going to go towards nonprofit animal shelters all across the United States. Here it is, guys. Well, n not this. This is Google. But, um, th th this. This is for Lexi. We want you to have pride in the brand that you're wearing which is why we are working to make it easier for everyone buying high quality owner and pet items to feel confident in who they're supporting. You can visit our website and sign up for our monthly newsletter for donation updates, pet pictures, charity mixer events, and so much more that we're working on. You can also read more about my motivation for Furlexy and our plans for the future. I'm going to get cheesy here for a second, but I'm just going to say this entire site wouldn't have been possible if it weren't for every rescue animal that has touched my heart again and again. My hopes for Fur Lexi is that with the help of all of you, we could actually change the lives of thousands of shelter pets, starting one paw print at a time while looking fabulous. Make sure to hit that notification bell and subscribe to get more videos with us. Hopefully we'll be able to post more soon whenever we have more time. Good night, my babies. I know you're trying to get away. All right. See you later, guys.